You've got your tags down here. So let's pick a tag. Let's pick a couple tags. And uh, and there it is. Now, now the customer, notice I picked customer two, but if it was a sub customer or something like that, then this is where you'd pick basically the sub customer to be breaking out the sub customer. If you had splits, then you can use your split item in a similar fashion so you can break out multiple sales categories for the deposit side of things. I'm gonna close that, that out. And then of course, you could create a rule and it will help you to automate the system. So let's see if all these kind of things, classes, projects and whatnot are in the rules so I can automatically assign all that stuff as we go. So let's say this is gonna be for a uh, customer. I'm gonna call the rule customer two because that's what's in the description. It's gonna be a money in rule in the checking account. And I'm gonna say that the, I usually choose bank text because I find it to be more uh, useful or precise oftentimes. And I'm gonna say it contains customer number two. So when it sees customer number two, that's when it's gonna apply the rule. If I, if I test out the rule, there's only one item that currently meets that condition, which makes sense. And then we've got the uh, transaction type as a deposit sale of product income that's the income account the payee i'm putting it to that sub job so that's going to be our our job area and here's our tags field so the tags will be automatically applied the class will be automatically but notice that if you wanted to split it then you'd have to you've, you've got some more options up here in the split area uh so you have that and then the location tracking is one location for the entire transaction and so there we have it. So let's go ahead and add this one. And so now if I go back on over to my reports on the balance sheet, let's run it. And let's just look at it by total over here. So if I run the balance sheet and I go into my checking account and drill down on the checking account, we added this one customer number two. Let's scroll up and let's just take a look at the profit and loss this time. And so if I run my profit and loss and run it, then once again, I can break this out by the, the various, the various tools we've been working with, which are the classes. So now it's breaking out by class on the income side of things. And then we're going to go to the location and it broke out by income on the location. And then you've got your customers which breaks out the jobs and sub customers and then again with the tags uh normally i would run the report from the tags area might be the best way to do it and then you can basically do your uh filtering by your tags over here and so we can run by the tags all right let's go back to the first tab again and let's add another uh another vendor this would be like an expense or money out and just add a rule with it just so we can see what the rule looks like. So this is going to be vendor one. It's going to utilities again. Let's say this was, let's say this is going to go to supplies, supplies. And then I'm going to assign it to this time. Let's pick, pick a uh, job or sub customer. We're going to make it billable. It's going to go to location, uh, Nevada, the class I'm going to assign will be personal, let's say this time. Tags, let's pick a couple tags that we can assign out and boom. And there we have it. So I'm not gonna split it this time, but instead just go to create the rule. I want a rule. There's gotta be rules here. There's gotta be some rules. Can't have anarchy crying out loud. It's a money out. So we're gonna say, description i'll pick the bank text again contains vendor one if i test it then it's picking up two transactions it's going to pick up with this rule okay expenses it's going to go to the supplies account the payee the customer this is where we're choosing the sub customer this time that's where you pick the sub customer or job so i can run the sales report by sub customer or job it's picking up the tags it's picking up the class, but it's applying the class to the full transaction. If I wanted more detail, I can go to the splits. And then I've got my location, Nevada, and then uh, that looks good. 
So let's notice it's auto adding too. So it's going to add them automatically. If I turn that off, by the way, and I save this, then it first gives me another little check before it adds it, which is kind of neat or good when you first start out. But I'll and but then you're going to probably auto add them because it's super fast to do it that way. And then your rules are being created over here. Boom. Rules. You can adjust your rules if you so choose. If I pull that into my balance sheet, it's just so cool. I don't know how, there's no other word to describe it. Anyways, so those pulled in. And then I'm gonna go on the expense side and exit this profit and loss, run it. We can see it by all the various stuff locations for example poor hamplo uh we had locations for the supplies and then we had the class tracking class tracking for uh the supplies we had then breaking it out by customers so we had by location or or the uh, uh job and then of course you can do it by tags again. So if I go back to the tab to the left, one more, one more thing is that you can, obviously you can think about the rules and then add the splits. So let's do one more money out, which is more likely where you're gonna add, you know, the splits to have multiple classes, for example. Vendor, let's say this time vendor three is gonna go to, do I have any other, I have a miscellaneous expense. M vendor three is very mysterious. <laughs> We put them into miscellaneous. This is going to be project, project uh, two or one, let's say, billable location. Let's just choose this location. Let's say this is business two or whatever. Tags, boom, tags, boom. And then I'm going to create a rule with it. And this is going to be vendor three rule, money out and all. I like choosing text, vendor three. Does it match up to anything? One transaction, MUI B to the N, BN, expense, miscellaneous, vendor. All right, tags are being applied, location, but I wanna split out that location possibly by, by line item. So I can hit the split button and then we've got some options uh, for, for splitting out the transaction. So on a percent or dollar amount basis, if you're gonna do a rule for it, then you might need like a percent breakout so it can kind of automatically break it out oftentimes. So let's say it's gonna be 40% miscellaneous and it goes to class two, or let's just say straight up business. And then let's say it's gonna be, uh, uh, this should be 40 and this is gonna be 60, 60% this also goes to miscellaneous, but we're choosing a separate class, which is going to be personal. So you can set up your rules, something like that vendor project. And, uh, so that's the general, that's the general setup. So let's save it and close it and check it out. And so there's our split rule that we put into what's the expense account miscellaneous. It's the mysterious miscellaneous profit and loss run it and uh we're gonna check it out by class boom and then in the miscellaneous it broke out the classes there beautifully so so that's how so the class tracking is pretty well all these tools class tracking, projects, location tracking, tags, sub customers, which used to be known as jobs are, are pretty, you can utilize them pretty well uh, using the bank feeds to kind of help you to integrate and automate your transactions. It's gonna look a little bit different in the bank feeds, but remember that the bank feeds are basically recording for the most part, the same, do you wanna leave the same transactions from this window, but it's only the banking transactions, which means deposits are usually the forms for increases and the expense form or check forms, usually expense forms because they're electronic transfers would be the decrease 